Please be seated. So since this is a bit of a, a getting to know you occasion, and, and if there are any of you who are visiting All Saints for the first time, welcome. It's my first time too. <laughs> yep. Okay, amen, that's about it. <laughs> so, so since this is a bit of a getting to know you moment, I, I, wanna, I wanna take a little survey. You can participate or not according to your desire, but here's the survey question. If you were to consider which version of the gospel is your favorite version, what would it be? Mark, Matthew, Luke, or John? So, so, if Mark's your favorite, raise your hand. Oh, oh. There, there are a few pity Mark votes there, I think. But, okay, um, if, if Matthew's your favorite, raise your hand. Okay, all right. What about Luke? If Luke's your favorite, raise your hand. Oh, oh, yeah. And John? Oh, you're raising two hands. How about Paul or Ringo? No, no, I'm just... Just checking to see if you're really tracking all this. So, so, so look, for me, um, um, I love Mark's, Mark's energy, his, his urgency. He just says, now, all the time, and coming near. And, 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 and I love that, that he's, he's got all these great miracle accounts. I love Mark for that reason. Matthew, Matthew I appreciate because Matthew, amongst all of the Gospels, is most intentional about making sure that Jesus' link to our Jewish faith ancestors is clear and never broken. We should always keep that in mind. But Luke's my favorite. Luke, Luke's, Luke's my favorite. Luke's my favorite because... First of all, I love his Jesus. He is, he is more vulnerable. He's, God bless you. He's, he's, he's trying to figure it out as he's going along. I mean, aren't we all? Um, I, I, I love this Jesus because, because his ministry, his mission, pays particular attention to those people on the margins, whether they were the tax collectors or the Samaritans or women, his heart and his focus is clear. Um, so I, I love Luke's Jesus, I do. Now, at, at the risk of alienating all those hands, some of them two hands, who are voting for John, let me confess to you, um, he's never been my favorite. Uh, um, um, yeah, you're not applauding me now, are you? Um, but no, no, that's okay, I'm just kidding. But, but, but let me tell you why. I, I, I mean, first of all, John's Jesus, there's such a... Um, such a triumphant quality to him and, and such a, a, a majesty that in some ways I find him hard to relate to. Um, John's Jesus just seems so distant, so, um, I don't know, so lofty. Uh, John also, he uses language, especially if you're reading from the, the NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version, that, that really invites anti-Semitism. He uses that phrase, the Jews this, the Jews that. The, the translation that you use today kind of irons that out a little bit, but it's problematic in people's readings. John's, John's gospel, it, it, it engages in a, in a circular sort of syntax that sometimes gives me a migraine trying to read it. And, and, and John, John also um, there's a, a redundancy to him um, that, that challenges my mild ADD. Um, look, if you've been reading from the common lecture these last several weeks, then this would have been the third consecutive gospel reading that was talking about Jesus and bread and wine. And, and you know what? Spoiler alert, next week, 
we get another one. And there's a part of me that's like, okay, John, I got it. Move on, right? Now, that being said, I will tell you that thanks to my wife, Diane, I'll point her out to you later, <laughs> who, who has spent 25 years of her lifetime in education as an English teacher, she's helped me warm to John a little bit. She has. Um, oh, so you can applaud her, right? Okay, I'll introduce you to her later. She, no, 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 no. So, so and, and what I mean is, you know, she's helped me appreciate um, the clarity of, of who Jesus was and is. She's helped me really come to love the, 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 the metaphors and the imagery which are filled throughout John, which help us get it at, at some deeper and transcendent truths that, that, that our own language falls short to really describe. She's helped me even sort through the, the syntax, and, and she's pointed out on more than one occasion, you know, maybe John's trying to make a point here you should pay attention to. So, so there is, there is there's artistry and beauty in John's gospel. Okay, you feel a little better, right? And like any, like any work of art, I think it, it's best appreciated if we sometimes take a step back and, and take in the totality of it and, and, and let it wash over us and then figure out what's, what's being offered for us. Today's gospel is just such an example of that. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. It begins, right? Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Jesus goes on to say, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. The one who eats this bread will live forever. Full disclosure, I was starting to get a little dazed. <laughs> Because there's a lot of eating and drinking and flesh and blood and life and all that stuff. Um, the little voice inside me was like, okay, can we just move on? But we shouldn't. We shouldn't move on too quickly. We should take a step back. Because if we take a step back, my goodness, this short gospel, it's, it's filled with, with an amazing invitation. And it really issues an awesome promise. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life. Do you hear? Now, again, because we're just getting to know each other, let me say something just parenthetically. I want to... I want to recognize that, that in this mm, invitation, there's a shadow side that can, that can leave some people wondering, well, where do I fit in? Where do, where do people of other faith fit in? And, and, and my goodness, that's a conversation that, that's more than just one sermon. That's a conversation that's more than just one forum. But I do want to be clear that I believe this, that, 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 that God is, that the divine... Is, can, is not so narrowly accessed by only what we share here. And so I don't, I don't want to have anyone marginalized even as we lift up this invitation to, to eat the bread, to drink the wine. Okay, parenthetical statement aside. It's a wild invitation. Eat the bread. Drink the wine, my body and my blood. It is an invitation to relationship, to this intimate relationship, to, to, to this ongoing relationship. It's an invitation that, 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 is, that is real and tangible and visceral, that, that is, it, it, it is, it is gut-reaching and gut-wrenching, this relationship that Jesus is inviting us to share. 
I was reading the commentary and, and the original Greek um, translation for eat and drink in this commentary, um, she pointed out, it actually is better translated to chew and to gulp. I'm not suggesting that when you come for communion, you gulp the chalice. But, but I, love, I love the sort of the, 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 I don't know, the gusto in that. Jesus is inviting us to a relationship with gusto. And let's not, let's not lose in, in, in some of the repetition that, that in that relationship, in the bread and wine, in the relationship with Jesus, we also are coming into a relationship with, with the holy, with the divine, who abides in him, who is incarnate in him. We in the bread and wine are invited to have a real and figurative taste of the divine. What an amazing relationship that is. And, and, and there's the invitation. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood will have eternal life. I don't know about you, but I, I can't fully grasp what eternal life is like. I can't. If, if some of you have it figured out, see me after church and I'll be all ears. But, but here's what I've come to understand, that, that some of the most profound and transcendent truths are impossible to, to fully grasp, to, to fully describe. We can only see them and speak of them through a glass dimly. But it doesn't mean I don't believe that it's true. I can't fully describe what eternal life is like, but I do believe it is a life um, that says that violence and hatred and evil will not have the final word. I can't fully describe what eternal life is like, but I do believe it is a life that makes sure that we know we are beloved in God's eyes with God's grace and we are bathed in that love. I can't fully describe eternal life, but I do believe it is a life beyond our wildest imaginings. And I can't fully describe eternal life, but I think, I believe it is a life we can start living right now together. What do you think? What do you think? We are being invited into relationship every time we come to this table, to this rail. And we are being promised life every time we eat or drink or chew or gulp. What do you think? So I'm looking out, and, and I'm guessing that, that a bunch of you, you probably heard this gospel before. Um, and maybe there's someone here or someone watching from afar. You're hearing it for the first time. I'm also looking out and guessing that, that, that many of you have been coming to All Saints, have called All Saints your spiritual home for years and years and years. And some of you are desperately looking for a spiritual home that can feel safe and hopeful and love-filled. So this gospel comes to us at a particular moment and maybe just at the right moment, the perfect moment for our ears. If you've been a member of All Saints for years and years and you've experienced some of the, the turmoil and the heartache and the sadness and disappointment, this gospel is for you. And if you, if you aren't sure whether to come into this place, but you know that out there there seems to be so much language of, of, of violence and so much polarization and so much chaos and so much judgment and bitterness, this gospel is for you. This gospel invites us into relationship, into new and changed relationship, not just relationship with Jesus, not just relationship with the holy, but new and changed relationship with one another. 
Because this gospel is about relationship. We can have new, we can have renewed relationship here at All Saints and outside those doors as we meet strangers, as we meet people who don't look like us, who don't think like us. This gospel invites us into new relationship. And this gospel promises that, that you, that we, individually, corporately, can begin to live into a new life right now. A new life with the company of Jesus. A new life moved, animated by the divine. A gospel about relationship and a gospel about new life. Maybe that's just the gospel you and we need to hear this very day. And if you're sitting there thinking, ah, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> or if you're thinking, yeah, that's all sort of Bible talk. Ah, it's not really for us. Or ah, I don't know what that means. Or, so don't don't fall victim to the failings of the religious leaders in this gospel. Who Their greatest failing was, was, was that they heard Jesus, they saw Jesus only through the lens of their past experiences, only through the lens of things that were familiar and traditional, and they, they weren't able to believe that the holy might be doing something new right then, right there in their very midst. And so they weren't able to have their relationships changed. Just not only with Jesus, but with one another. And, and they missed out on the new life to which they were invited. Let's, let's dare to believe. Let's dare to say yes to this invitation to new relationships. Let's dare to come and, and, and drink and eat and, 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 and chew and gulp. Let's dare to make our relationships different because we are getting a taste of the holy. And it invites us to be in different relationships with each other and with the world out there. And let's dare to begin living a new life right now. There is no question in my mind that this Jesus, that the Holy, right now is inviting us to new relationship. Right now is inviting us to new life. The only question is, to hearken back to the wisdom and words of Proverbs that we first heard, the only question is whether we're going to eat and drink and walk and live in the way of insight. Amen.